Well, last part was sort of boring, but this is where the game really starts. And by really starts, I mean it starts with an extremely convoluted chain of events that you somehow have to figure out on your first time. But, I mean, it's possible. And I don't remember how I figured it out my first time, I probably just... Considering I was so much younger than I am now, I probably just looked up a walkthrough or something. Oh wait, it wasn't even that. I, it, I just watched a ton of speedruns before I actually went out and bought the special edition thing on uh, eBay. So, yeah. I already knew basically how to do this beginning part, at least. But yeah, you'll see how convoluted it gets. So, the first thing you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go to the uh, Great Fairy Shrine in North Clock Town. This being Clock Town, which is divided into the cardinal directions, four sections, north, south, east, and west. And we are currently in the south, but let's just grab that uh, fairy that we'd have to grab anyway. Yeah. So you can either just sort of walk into it if you go th in this direction, or you can go to the fairy fountain and they'll be like, Hey, can you find my uh, missing part? And then you'll just so somehow go over here and find it. And in the night, you'll find it in East Clock Town, but we'll get to that. So now we just have to go to North Clock Town, which honestly would be easier if I went in a different direction, but oh well. Yeah, right now you can definitely see the slowdown, and I was kind of getting worried. Like right here, it's alright. And it re most of the slowdown really only shows up on my screen when it's not in uh, 30 frames per second, but I don't know. Right now it looks pretty okay. So yeah, you can't really like advance anywhere until you go to the fairy fountain. So, we just have to go there for now. Get some stuff, you know. Advance forward. But yeah, here we are. See, you're supposed to get this message before you have that, uh, fairy, this guy, floating in your pocket. Cause now we're set! <laughs> yep, no problem. Sorta of had to, to, uh, Go get that mask in our precious item. Just imagine that in uh, red text. <laughs> there we go, now we got magic. And with magic, uh, the Deku Link has a sort of special ability in which we can blow bubbles! But those bubbles are like hard projectiles, I don't know. Ugh, yeah. Yep, bubble blasts. I mean, right there it told you to go to the observatory, and then that sort of leads you to the rest of the events, but I mean... If you're a kid, and you're not reading stuff, this is still sort of a really, fairly, you know, convoluted. It's slightly less so. I mean, the hardest part is just, hey, look, a man. A man I've seen before in a different game. But, yeah, it still is fairly convoluted, like, just a weird sort of puzzle that sort of gets you ready for the time limit thing, but they give you plenty of time. That is like a good hour or so. The, the three-day cycle. So, I mean, it's not bad, but... Oh, well. Here's Tingle. He is age 35, and he's dressed in a skin-tight fairy suit. You may remember him from the incomplete Wind Waker LP. 
as the creepy guy who gave us a camera, well, was hiding a camera in his cell, and gave us a Game Boy with his face on it. But yeah, we can buy maps from him. I, I had never done this in a different, uh, in any other save fi file, it just hasn't occurred to me to need it. But I guess I'll do it now, just to make things easier for people to understand where things are. Especially if they're using this as, like, a sort of walkthrough sort of thing. Do not steal. Okay, so what we gotta do is this kid's blowing a blow pipe thing at this balloon, so we gotta pop it. That got his attention. If we tried to talk to him otherwise, he'd say, I'm too busy popping this balloon, come back some other time. So yeah, I guess it sort of tells you what you have to do, and here he's saying that the observatory is his gang's territory. But, yeah. We gotta play hide and seek, sound familiar? Yeah. This, this game totally stole this from Wind Waker. Oh, we got plenty of time. That is like a good 20 minutes. Well, slightly less so now, but still. So now we just gotta go find them, which is um, pretty easy. I mean, I'm just an idiot, and I haven't played this game for a while, so I kind of forgot where some of them were. I know where three of them are. Luckily, the two that I forget are in the same, like, sectors of town. Oh, want to see some- oh, never mind. Wrong- oh, wrong dude. Let's go find that other dude. Yep. So another dude's up on a ledge that we can't get to, unless we use this Deku flower thing over here to propel ourselves into the air. And here he is. You want to see some bullshit? So these guys can run outside of- this guy, specifically, can run outside the area in which you cannot get him back, and he will not run out of the way until you leave the area, so we're gonna have to leave him for now. And I gotta make up my mind. The next person we're going to get is in West Clock Town. And I forget if I go there first and then come back and grab this guy, or if I'm just gonna turn right around and it looks like I'm gonna go get him. So yeah, it's generally just that, you know, hide-and-seek game. Only these guys aren't really hidden or anything, like the <coughs> killer bees were in Wind Waker. Like, they were at least hiding places. These guys are just sort of in different parts of town. Walking around in the open. But yeah, we can... You can corner him pretty easily, but I'm an idiot, so it doesn't matter. And see, he can't run outside the area behind the soldiers who will block any Deku scrubs from getting out of town. So, I guess we're cool there. That dog will bite you, by the way, if you're not spinning around as a Deku scrub. He'll just beat you up. What a jerk. But now, we can try our hand at that guy again. I guess. <clears throat> Sorry. Got crap in my throat. Been sick lately, but... That's neither here nor there, so let's try to uh, be more careful and try not to get in the area which causes him to run before we can get in between him and the impossible to catch him spot. And apparently he goes and hides under boxes, so that's kind of cool. If you're not looking, you might not notice that that box is slightly tilted, but it's fine. And here's a little shortcut. If we go up this way, we can get to North Clock Town easier. And this is the way you should go if you're going from West Clock Town to North Clock Town, but some people forget <clears throat> me later. So there's a dude behind here. Uh, the leader is actually hiding, which is nice. Ah, slow down. Okay, so all the b uh, bombers come over there when you catch them and leave the area and catch him. So, oh, where's the last guy? He must be in sl South Clock Town, right? Nope, he's in North Clock Town. And you can see how long it took for me to come back here. But yeah, he was hiding behind that tree. I'm just a real idiot. Like, for real, but. 
But we're just gonna have some casual racism here. And this is implying that after you become a human again, you gotta do that whole mini game over. Which, of course, we will be, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But this code never changes at the start of each save file. So, you can write it down and never actually get the bomber's notebook. But, I mean, why not get the bomber's notebook? It's a really easy game, and they always hide in the same place. So if you've done it once, it's only like five minutes extra to your life that you waste. I guess. Anyway, now we gotta go up to the observatory, which is down this alley into the sewers. I guess. I don't know. It's the only way to the observatory, too, which is weird. As you'll see when we actually get down there. See, the one not racist bomber. Yep. Anyway, so if we go down here, we go down a huge. And there's a ton of water here. And now you can see it. There's a ton of water here. And I guess the dude that's in the observatory just sort of lives here? Like, in here? I don't know. Anyway, there's a Skulltula that we can just walk around, so it's no real big threat. But if we were to face it, we could use our bubbles, which is nice. Hey, it's another balloon to pop. And I, I believe you have to pop that to get up the ladder. I mean, I don't see why else it would be there. Anyway, now we're in the observatory. And I swear to God, the only way to get in here is through that, like, secret passageway, so I don't even know why it's built. There's a door there, but it leads to a fenced-in area. So, I don't know, this is a train of thought that we can abort right now. See, everyone's just racist. Against, like, these, what are they, Deku scrubs, yeah. I don't even know. <clears throat> Well, it seems like Skull Kid's just screwing everything up. Oh well, we better scope him out. Which is pretty easy. He's just up there. He wasn't even looking at that moon. Even creepy moons can cry. Oh, that's just rude. Oh, now he's gone. Okay. Whatever. Apparently this is like a, a somewhat common occurrence. The moon just cries? I don't know. I mean, most moons don't have a face. So I guess in Termina it's cool. So now we can go through that door. And just walk over. Yep. Okie dokie. Well, what, what will we do with this moon tier? You might be asking. <laughs> well... <laughs> Let me show you. Eventually. Oh, there is no jump cut, is there? Shoot. Oh, well, I'm just gonna have to walk all the way there, I guess. There we go. And yes, actually spinning does go faster than walking. All the speedrunners do it, and that Skulltula is hiding up there. There we go, ow. And if we just shoot him. Which you can do while L targeting. And just knock him out. There we go. We got one rupee. That's cool, I guess. And yes, um, you can jump five times on water as a Deku, yeah, blah, blah, as a Deku scrub. Uh, after that, you just sort of teleport back to where you started. Uh, you may take like a quarter or a half a heart of health, but it's nothing bad. 
And if you spin into the jump, you do actually jump farther with each step. So, if you need to go somewhere far, you should spin onto the water. You just go faster, longer jumps, you know. Okay, so this is what you have to go go do with the Moon's Terry. Go over to this yellow... I don't know, Deku Sprout? This Deku Scrub Sprout thing? I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, ow. What a dick. Anyway, if you talk to him again after he has that cutscene... Yep. You can give him a moon's tear. And, well, you have to. So, yeah, you're just gonna have to open my menu and put it on one of the C things and give it to him. So there you go. And this is actually the start of a long trade quest, like, later in the game. Each time you access a new area, you get a new, um, one of these things in that new area. So... You can either, like, progressively do the trade quest and have to start from the beginning each time you start start a new time cycle. Or you can just do it all at once, and I will probably be doing it, like, sequentially. But cut out the new parts each time, which shouldn't be that hard, but... Oh well, I'll just have to keep watching this cutscene over and over. But yeah... So he gave us the deed. So now we can get up to here, which actually gives us access to the clock tower, but we're going to have to wait until midnight of the third day. Which means, like, right before the moon falls, which sort of sucks. So, there's something else we can do with this deed. So let's get that done now. And it's kind of a joke thing that you run into like, accidentally sometime, but I'm just gonna get it out of the way now. So, if you go into the inn at night, you have to go through this, um, this, like, upstairs door. It does not lock. The door on the bottom there does lock. But if you go into the inn at night, you can go down these stairs, and around them, and go into the bathroom, in which you will find a hand, and if you talk to the hand, he needs some paper, so you can give him the deed, and he will be very thankful. Yay! Yay! This is my favorite dude. I, we saved him. I don't know, someone... Uh, I guess he needed some, like he ran out of a roll of toilet paper or something. But yeah, we get a piece of heart. And we never see him again. Well, actually, we'll see him again if we start the time cycle over again. So we might visit him again sometime, but... Eh, there's nothing else we get from him. So... It's kind of unfortunate. Okay, so one glitch you can do... I'm just showing off this glitch because I need to get to West Clock Town. If you can turn yourself exactly, like, backwards from the guard, like that and actually go to the other side. You can actually clip through his spear and get out. So this is how you can get out during the uh, first three day cycle before you turn human. But it's kind of useless and boring, so we'll cut it out and I'll see you next time.